Hello, welcome to the edition of our show, Money Means Business, and business means money. And of course, a lot uh, means, uh, um, well, a lot of work and uh, a lot uh, of business. And of course, choosing the right persons in the elections also means uh, business and means a lot of money. And this is what we're talking about uh, in the shadow of the coronavirus pandemic that is uh, threatening everybody for the second wave but uh, we are holding on and we're going on and a uh, coverage of uh, the second round of the elections with us here is our guest uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Hazen Hillel uh, from a member from uh, the Youth Political Coordinating Committee welcome sir with us Hello. if I'm just saying the right yes. uh, <laughs> uh, definitely there, there is a lot mm. actually happening and we're covering we covered the first part and uh, we would like to cover the second part, which is the capital, Cairo, mm -hmm. right now, uh, elections and uh, going for elections, which is very important, and we know how important that is. But first, we have a um, short break with uh, a report, and we're going to be coming back, starting our talk. Stay tuned to us. Don't go away. Polls opened in several electoral districts across Egypt on Saturday morning to kick off voting in the second phase of Egypt's House of Representatives elections. The second phase of the parliamentary elections covers 13 governorates Cairo, Qalyubeya, Daqahleya, Menufeya, Garbeya, Kafr al Sheikh, Sharqiya, Damietta, Port Said, Ismailiya, South, and Sinai. Around 9,468 polling stations opened their doors for voting on Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Around 31 million Egyptians are eligible to cast their ballots in the second phase. Some 2,083 candidates are competing for 70 individual seats, while 284 candidates are competing under the list system in two districts. The results for the second stage are set to be announced on 15th of November. Runoffs are due to be held later in November and in December, and the winners will take their seats in Parliament in January. In polling stations, wearing face masks and adhering to social distancing are among the mandatory restrictions adopted. Moreover, Egypt upped its security measures nationwide to secure the governorates where the elections are being held, with security forces dispatched on main roads and other areas to ensure the safety of vital facilities. The domestic vote comes one day after around 140 polling stations in embassies and consulates in 124 countries, concluding mail-in voting by Egyptians abroad after opening to receive ballots on Wednesday. إن المهام المنوط بها البرلمان تحتم عليه أن يكون برلمانا حرا وموصلا حقيقيا لرغبات الشعب وعليه أن يمارس هذه المهام في سياق الممارسة الديمقراطية السليمة اوعوا تختاروا غير الأفضل ليكم والبلدكم
We're back again uh, with our guest with the coverage of uh, the second round of elections. Uh, now, Cairo, the capital, with our guest, Mr. Hazem Hillel, a member of uh, the political, the Youth Political Committee, Coordinating Committee. Welcome again. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there is a lot happening, and we just, you know, we said we talked about this, but now there is a difference. We talked about the first round of elections. Now we've got the second round and Cairo, the capital. How different is that? How important is that? And there's a lot, of course, you know, under those big headlines that we need to just mm -hmm. probe. Well, as you mentioned in the beginning about choosing the right candidate yes. uh, to, to vote and the pandemic of the COVID-19 and it's coming back, uh, yeah. as the reports say. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, for me, it's linked together by choosing the right candidate that will ensure the continuous um, economic development that Egypt is witnessing uh, in with the legislations uh, and his role in, in the parliament. Without choosing the right candidate with the current situation that's going on, not only in Egypt, but around the world, it's going to be uh, difficult for Egypt to pass the second wave if it happens, like, uh, w like uh, many countries that are suffering right now. We want to prove that we are on the right track yeah. through uh, both our executive and legislation uh, com uh, committees and chambers that they work together in order to pass this. So choosing the right candidate will always put you on the right track and to ensure you the continuity of the development that you're passing through. The importance of the capital comes from this point where all eyes are on, on, on Cairo, all the report, uh, reporters, all the following up uh, committees and, and, and several institutions are following up it's all eyes on Cairo yeah. and for today it was going on great despite the weather changes in uh, some parts of Cairo and the raining and so on but an, as an indication on the first day it's all it's a really good indication mm -hmm. and that people are aware especially following up on the elections in the first round that they have a role to do and they have to, to go and participate and uh, enjoy their constitutional rights. Definitely. Um, you know, I remember you mentioned last time, and the, sa the same thing, I haven't gone yet mm -hmm. to the election because yes. of work today, and I thought the second day is always people go more yeah. uh, on the second day, and this is what I'm going to be doing, and others, of course, are going to be doing, but yet you said, you know, indications uh, were really good that people, you know, are just heading uh, to the polling stations in mm -hmm. order to uh, uh, cast the ballots. Well, um, it remains, you know, that uh, some people are not really uh, informed, politically speaking, or uh, they don't know who to choose. How do we, um, important to have uh, youth and others uh, informed and educated, politically speaking, in order to know what to ch whom to choose? Because choosing uh, the right person means a lot mm -hmm. for the future, the future of the country, definitely. Well, we have like to pass the short-term elections that is going on now and put a, and set a plan for the long term mm -hmm. in the next five years, w uh, by the political education and uh, of the political um, um, rights that you that you as a citizen have. Yeah. So we first have to pass this, uh, and then we set a plan with the Ministry of Education uh, that ensures the political de uh, p development, education, and rights to all youth uh, graduating from high school and from universities. Yes. By this step, that they would ensure that they know the rights going out of university before they enter uh, the, the work field. And this, uh, this part is concerning the youth. Other parts of the political development plan that is going on, we need to enlighten the people to read more of the political parties yeah. programs and the, polit and the political agenda for a candidate. What is his plan? What is he intending to do? How can he serve the, the development plan by His Excellency President of Fatah Sisi? How is this all linked together or no? And then you can choose the right person. Don't choose the right person by his name uh, just or his family or so on, but he, what he can offer Egypt before he can offer yourself. By ensuring this uh, criteria in a candidate, you can ensure that you, you're electing and voting for the right candidate. But then you would not know uh, about what the person that that he is posing, you know, or that that you know he's to be elected, is good or not good, and what he's doing. He has to have um, well political history, or he has to have been before in uh, the elections, or you know, um, been a member of parliament before. Mm -hmm. Some of them we know that well are just again um, uh, you know uh, are their candidates. And some we don't know. So maybe, you know, we don't elect the right person. Well, some, you know, like that we know that we're going to you know, electing them again without giving the chance for others 
that are not known, but you know, they should have the mm -hmm. chance in order to show what they've got. Well, it's like a mix you have to make between youth, like the CPYP yeah. youth that are running through the elections, and uh, the persons with experience, like all uh, parliament members and so on. It's like establishing a football team that you have to reach the right mix in order to play to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time we're not talking about winning a football match, it's mm -hmm. winning uh, the right candidates and the right parliament that mm -hmm. will represent Egypt and its legislations. Yes. This mix is happening right now, and in, in uh, uh, when you look to the form of the candidates that are running, you can find a lot of CPYP uh, representing uh, and also uh, people with expertise, and then you can read the right mix. This will not. The independent ones, you know, if I go for elections, there yes, is an independent yes. one person that is independent. Of course, there is you yes. know, like uh, many members, and we can choose you know one uh, according to our yeah. uh, own demands, and then there is a list. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in the CPYP is represented in both the list and individuals. Yes. Where you, uh, where you can vote either. You will find CPYP everywhere. Okay. Uh, and this is something to be proud of because we're all youth. And this is an encouragement to youth to take, like we said last time, that uh, we, they should take the role in, in the coming elections and uh, join the political life. It's easy. Um, run, getting back to the point of choosing the right mix and so on, the youth will learn from the expertise and, and then they will carry on the message uh, along with the rest. And also we're running through a, um, a, a different phase of the political life in Egypt since mm. His Excellency uh, took charge uh, by g giving the parties more time and more uh, chance and more ground to establish themselves and connecting with the people. Uh, this, will, this will show uh, very much in the coming few years by who's going to win and how the political life will be formed in the country. And this, uh, by then, you, by the next five years, you can, you can judge easily about the results of certain candidate and a certain political party, and then you can choose the right track. It won't take five years, ten years, it maybe last for 15 years until you reach the right and healthy political life for Egypt. Definitely. Um, well, you know, like with the right mix, right now but you know of course we need your people also with experience mm -hmm. in order to learn from them yes. uh, so you know youth you know has to learn it's like you know we want to be we want them to to be there but they have to learn from the experience mm -hmm. the expertise mm -hmm. definitely um, well uh, does every candidate that who is now um, there have in his own mind um, the good of the country and to give uh, to the country, to give, you know, to the people, to, we are in a rebuilding process uh, and we are racing against time. So how do we ensure that, um, well, the candidates uh, who are there are just going the right track? We don't have um, a certain mechanism yeah. to, to ensure this in the current uh, time, but with the next five years, we will see w for ourselves the results on the ground. Uh, by a very simple, easy thing, numbers. Uh, numbers can't lie. If the legislation itself is going fine, the economic uh, development of Egypt is going fine, then, we're going, then we chose the right persons that help the success and development uh, w with the government to ensure the con continuous of these numbers. There's, there's also the mix, and we can see this by the youth themselves. We can measure how much did they learn by their performance inside uh, the parliament and in the Senate. If they learn, they, they will find them giving us uh, speeches, uh, presenting legislations, uh, uh, taking the charge and the lead. And this is something that we can easily measure through the next five years. Well, now we know like how, how different is it from last elections, the difference, and how do you feel about the elections this time? Um, did you have enough time? as y young politicians you know, to prepare for that. Um, did you have enough time to, uh, um, well, well, talk to your, your the, the constituencies and, and prepare yourself and uh, that, you know, you've got a lot to give mm -hmm. and you really want people to know about that. Mm -hmm. Well, we as youth have more energy to move yeah. and faster to, uh, and faster movement, and we really enjoyed the time and the squeeze time that we had. But the political marketing plan uh, that we have set to ourselves ensured that we m must communicate and go on on, on ground to, to and mm -hmm. talk to the people. Which, like I said last time, uh, this give the people hope that, that there is youth. 
and also the mix of the candidate. If you talk, what's the difference between this parliament and the, and the, and the past one? one yeah. The mix of people, you will find media uh, uh, spokesmen. We will find uh, sports uh, like Hadia Hosni, she's an Egyptian uh, uh, famous player. You will find um, 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 widows of marchers uh, from, the, uh, mm -hmm. from the police and, uh, and mm -hmm. the army. Yeah. You'll find youth from the CPYP. This mix will ensure that the, that the parliament is speaking by for and by and for the Egyptian citizens, which will ensure up more that the right message and the right legislation will be talking uh, of, of the people, not behind personal agendas. Definitely. Uh, this is, you know, really a wonderful mix, you know, it's like those, you know, even uh, wives of martyrs, you know, their, their husbands, you know, gave their lives to this country mm -hmm. and they just, you know, they are comp continuing yes. in the path and, and giving, which is really very important and it's really uh, touching, really. Mm -hmm. And with, you know, the rest of the candidates, it's really wonderful. Um, well, talking about the people themselves, when you went to talk to the people, how, you know, everybody is just really caring about the presidential elections, uh, as if, you know, this is the sole thing. But then coming to um, the elections right now, they just, you know, think, well, some of them, well, how important could that be? Mm -hmm. Why should I go and elect, you know? Well, things are just, you know, like running themselves, you know, they don't even give a, a, a damn about the sum, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, when a problem happens, then, you know, they just you would like to go and talk to the representative in parliament. Um, that I elected you, then you know, should do something for me and help me in this problem. Um, how is it this time when you talk to people? Uh, are just is there any difference between the attitude of people um, this year and these elections differing from the past election? I will give you just one example that can sum summarize everything. Our visit to uh, CPYP to Halaib and Shalatim. Yeah, it was enormous, amazing. The people found youth, they found people coming from everywhere around Egypt, from the CPYP, and coming to talk to them about the importance of participating in the elections. We had several discussions between them in all fields of, of running the state and uh, how Egypt is developing and uh, how the, uh, the CPYP came with the idea of visiting Halayab Bushalatin. We've even made certain connections that is going on until now and we're preparing for another visit after the elections. Yes. This, this is a, as a small indication of how people are willing to listen, mm -hmm. but listen, when you go to them, like Halayb and, and Shalatin, when you, when you give them the importance of their vote and how important that every vote matters, uh, will, give the, will give you in, in return the participation and development that you want in the mm -hmm. citizens. Mm -hmm. and, w and also the second thing is that we are youth and people are, uh, like you said, they, they are bored from the old same faces. Yeah. But when you, they see a youth like their sons and grandsons, they will listen to you because they, they feel proud yeah. that there is certain youth talking about politics, talking about election, talking about the good of the country. So this is another edge that this election is witnessing. Definitely. Um, you know, what about Sinai? Because Sinai is a very important part of the country that with the people was very marginalized for a long time mm -hmm. and then of course you know that you need to just have them there back and to have to th they should shoulder their responsibilities and be given their rights and uh, they should be the rights to their lands and everything and um well it's very important and very critical area actually people of sun of sinai especially know the importance of having a strong parliament a strong backup for the parliament yeah. and a strong backup for the country as itself. They're more patriot than some of the, of, of the people in the capital as they are fighting terrorists on the first lines. Definitely. So they know especially that the importance of how the image, even itself abroad, of having a strong parliament and participating in the elections and they always do what's best for the country yeah. every time they've put to the test. So I, I want to thank them. Uh, because they know what it takes to be a patriot and how to present the country in the right way. Despite being marginalized for some exactly. time. But exactly. then they, you, you, aren't you amazed, you know, like when you go and talk to people like Halib and Shalatin and uh, areas that are remote, mm -hmm. not the capital itself and Sinai, and you find them, they are more aware of uh, what they want and their rights and they just seem you know, like, uh, they know that mm -hmm. they should have right to that and they are willing to participate while some other 
uh, uh, people in the capital, they're just like, you know, oblivious of everything, you know, some, mm. you know, don't really care about that. The pressure of, lo of life in the capital and the mix of who's living in the capital puts you on a continuous pressure. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm coming from Tagamwa now and it's raining and it's very heavy and the traffic is stuck and so on. How would so that affect uh, the elections? It, of course, it definitely will affect. Uh, s for certain segments where mm -hmm. they can, they al always want to, s to be easy to vote definitely. and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hope the weather by tomorrow will will be better. But the pressure in the capital, again, is not there in remote areas or like Sinai and Halab yeah. and Shalatin. It's pure, uh, it's very pure. And they're lucky to have such pureness there. And the result can affect them easily with the economic uh, and trade and, and uh, tourism, for example, for Sinai. Definitely. They can feel it first ground. Uh, and that's why it makes it easy to communicate because they understand the problem itself, Definitely. not the causes of the problem. And they, they put answers to the problem, not talk about the causes of the problem, mm -hmm. like what's going on here in the capital. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier to, to read and, and discuss with them what's going on in their minds. And what, the, what the, their demands are very simple to achieve. And this is going on through the plans of development for Sinai or to Halab and Shalati. Are they incorporated like uh, they have representatives representing them? Yes. Uh, uh, Even in, in CPYP, we have um, a good friend of from mine from, from Sinai. Mm -hmm. And we have a number of uh, uh, candidates uh, from there also. This is amazing. And um, what do you expect from the uh, parliamentary elections this time? What should be presented? And what do you expect from the people um, in return? Well, this, uh, this parliamentary election is quite unique as it's uh, go going um, to have two legislation chambers uh, back again from, uh, from the past one. So there will be um, a certain mix that have to be done between the two legislation chambers. And I've, tr and I've uh, proposed something that, that we have um, a small committee that can link both uh, Senate and Parliament to work together faster and easier. And uh, through the CPYP uh, youth that represented it in both. Uh, such uniqueness and uh, roles that is going to, to be played by the Parliament and the Senate makes it uh, different and challenging, especially like we said in the coming uh, pandemic uh, second wave of Corona, yeah. which will put load on them and how they're gonna meet, how they're gonna organize their seating with the huge number of people sitting in one chamber, how they go gonna come up with legislation that will protect the Egyptian economy and plans of development and so on. So they are, are fa coming up for a and facing a tough challenge mm -hmm. that will put them t up to the test and I, I'm sure I'm sure they are up to it. Well, um, how do you, you know, like when, when you talk to people, well, year on year, now, you know, things are just uh, developing and things changed. How do you see youth and others, of course, when you talk to them, um, they really want to uh, go to the, the, the parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. uh, they're uh, well to take part, take responsibility and share uh, and do something, their own um, job that has to be well, the minimal thing. Go and just, you know, take part and mm -hmm. uh, elect your own representative. Well, um, as we mentioned that there have to be a certain political development plan for yeah. the youth. Yeah. This is the first step. And second step is giving them idols and someone to look up to. And mm -hmm. that's what we're hoping as CPYP to present is that there, there, there is still, there is a chance that you can do this and you can, your voice can be heard. You can take part in politics by joining both and having the, the political development plan and education done by, by the idols uh, or, or, or examples from CPYP and different uh, parliament youth members that they will give them, that the, the, there will be a proof on ground that they can do this, especially for the ladies uh, as well, because the ladies now and women of Egypt are empowered like, like, uh, like none before. Like never before. Like never actually. before, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, not, not never before. We had, you know, queens, yeah. Patrick Nefertiti, you know, all these, you know, <laughs> Egyptian queens, definitely Nefertari. But then, you know, like now in this, uh, uh, this time, you know, after being also marginalized and we're going back strongly. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is very important, but now, you know, like with, with these, you know, elections taking place, with people you know, like learning uh, bit by bit, you know, that their own rights and they have to do this. Mm, well, you know, they have to go to the parliamentary elections. Uh, they're not presidential elections, but you know, it's the parliamentary elections are very important as well. Um, but there are some, you know, vibes, those, you know, who try to just mingle in everything and, and um, uh, 
creates a very um, bad spirit, mm -hmm. uh, discourage people from taking their own, uh, uh, you know, responsibilities and, and going there and voting. They say, well, nothing is changing, uh, you know, like spreading all the rumors and the bad things. Mm -hmm. How do you see these, um, well, ill feelings in your work in the political arena and with the people that you're just dealing with? Well, um, voting is the same. Uh, if you do your job voting in your uh, sporting club, to choose a board that will represent you and represent your kids in the sporting club, then you will have to do the same role in the country. Yeah. It's example that the club is a smaller community that represents the whole country. Yeah. And when you look to the same people that giving up the negative vibes, like you said, when it comes to their club, they go and vote and, and so on, which is quite strange for me because it's the same thing on a smaller scale and a smaller community. Yeah. And then they come and complain because of the board and so on. This is, if you take the same example and put it on a larger scale like the country and the parliament, their duty and the role must to go and share and vote in the in the parliament election second thing is that when we when we look at it as a whole as a parliament uh, as a parliament member and, and a candidate they have to make the convincing themselves as candidates uh, to reach out to uh, the community that's talking and so on third thing is that when when you look to the political marketing campaigns that have been done uh, you have to communicate with these people especially like the past um, of, um, of days with the u.s elections when every vote counts and it changed um, states from uh, from uh, uh, Trump to Biden, like Pennsylvania. Definitely. So every vote, every vote matters, and people should see this and sense this. They should understand this, that yeah. every vote matters, definitely. Yes, uh, and uh, um, they're following up the U.S. elections and yeah, see more the than change. the parliamentary elections. So you know, if you're following up this, you know, you should really you, you should really participate and take definitely. because you saw by your hand in the country like the United States how much a vote. One vote can count and one vote can change the whole thing together. Definitely. Well, talking about the United States and the, the elections, presidential elections going on, um, how do you think uh, they will be affecting um, the Middle East, they will be affecting us, uh, they be affecting the dollar mm. uh, going da down and going up? Well, mm. How things, in your opinion, are going to be changed, especially that we still you don't know, know that there are just you know, like uh, things you know happening. It's not the end of it. There's still, you know, we know that uh, on the other side there will be appeals and uh, there is mm -hmm. the court and um, there are just things, um, you know, against uh, the 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 count. Mm -hmm. Well, first, um, I will answer in three aspects. Uh, the first one, it's not over yet. Yes, yeah. I know it's not over. I'm, I'm recalling the Al Gore and Bush uh, yeah. uh, when they went also to the courts and so on. This will happen. But Al Gore isn't Trump, and Trump is more stubborn, yeah. and he will put up a, a good fight. On the second, on the economic level, um, um, it's been throughout history when a democratic president comes with a mixed uh, Senate and the House of Representatives, the economic increase isn't th that good and isn't much, like 8.8% 8 .8 only, okay. when it comes to a Republican president and a mixed uh, uh, Senate and House of Representatives. So it will affect the, uh, the, the economy of the United States, yes it will. Uh, uh, but with only a certain increase of amount, not uh, not like people expected, it's, uh, Wall Street is going blue and so on. On the third aspect is um, uh, how will it affect the Middle East? Um, uh, let's talk about Egypt first. Egypt leadership in the, in the area, in the Middle East and in Africa, um, will not put it up to any change or so on because we have proven our, our positions and yeah. rights and so on. Um, as for the Middle East, the Middle East is following uh, the same um, development plans throughout the countries and they will have to wait to what's going to happen with the, with the appointment of uh, Foreign Affairs uh, Minister for the United States and so on and see how the things uh, goes. Um, Egypt is standing strong at the moment and it will def not differ with it whose president is coming because we know where we're going with the plan of uh, sustainability 2030. Well, um, you know, Talking again, you know, to Egypt, we talk about the youth um, forming, and let's say, building youth that know their rights. Um, they know that they, they've got allegiance to the country. They know that there are political rights, and they know how to, well, if, if they just go into that, they'd be going to be active and, and uh, playing a role. Mm -hmm. um, there will be political life uh, in it. Now, you know, we're learning all that after, you know, the, the changes that took place. Well. We used to have Tarbiya Qawmiya, 
at school and uh, civil or you know education whatever but you know like we used to it, it we we thought why would they give us something like that and we just memorize this and put it but then at the end of it it affected us it built uh, you know this generation a generation that uh, uh, loves the country and is ready to give this to the 1973 mm. um generation that yeah. even even very young we were but then we knew you know like we're, we're very happy for our victory we knew you know that we should give to our country we we, we know that we have you know um, mm -hmm. uh, you know rights and we do have also uh you know our own part to play uh in there and to give now that there's some generations the new generations you know they're just you know like not really thinking much they're traveling they're going here they're going there living different life you know with the different developments and uh, the developments that took place since 2011 and um, the upheaval that took place and of course you know with the bad vibes that just you know uh, kind of uh, you know mixing the minds mm. of youth or giving them wrong opinions how do we form or we have something not better than what we had of Tarbiya Qawmeya that would be really uh, uh, forming the students from school well, first uh, step is uh, when, when the youth, men, uh, you finish high school before entering university, they have to go through a two weeks or something. Uh, I'm, I would like to suggest that this also be on women and ladies to take something similar because, as we said, the empowerment of, uh, of women these days will, will require them to have a political education, yeah. more political education. Mm -hmm. Second thing, well, like we talked, is about uh, media and how its role in affecting and building the mindset of the youth. Um, and we will like to dis dis divide the youth segment from 18 to 25 and from 25 to 35 because at this mindset and below 18, yeah. be people below 18 and from 18 to 25 are much attached and linked to social media and media and so on. Uh, YouTube and, and, and uh, TikTok and, uh, and so we need to find a way through like series like we talked about uh, uh, movies that talks about uh, patriotism and what's going on in the spirit during 1973 uh, like the series of Ramadan and so on and continue putting the spirit in the mindset of, of the Egyptian youth not like poisoning them with other media content that it's, po it's not taking them to the right direction of the political development that we're going through. Exactly. By doing these uh, steps that we will ensure the right generation to come to lead and take part of the political life. Well, you know, the bit, you know, as we talked last time, you know, that the some films and and uh, uh, um, series that were showing the truth about what's happening, and people really, and those you know, who did not really know how the life of uh, mm -hmm. uh, soldiers yes. in the front uh, and in wars and uh, how is it, how is it? But they started learning that, and it made a difference. They started understanding a lot, and as you said, it should go on, you know, like from TV. Mm -hmm from school, mm -hmm. uh, from schools and so on and so forth. And of course, home and sometimes, you know, you cannot really rely if, you know, like a person comes from a home that doesn't really care, you know, so he would not be caring mm -hmm. that much. But then most of the time he's spending at school mm -hmm. with his own colleagues and, 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 you know, friends. So it's very important, uh, the peer effect, you know, like uh, and, the, and the, the professor's effect and the school effect that shows in the building of the human being of the, from the child to, you know. You said a very lovely word, building a human being. A patriot human being is what the country needs. Mm -hmm. not, just b um, uh, not just on the political aspect, yeah. but uh, on um, embracing the child from, from, his, uh, from his early years if they found a gift in him, like um, in maths or in economics or, or whatever field he's, he's good in. We need to embrace him more and put him in the life of the Egyptian community and Egyptian uh, uh, patriotism, not just like encourage him to leave the country and go study abroad. Definitely. This is a, a also a um, um, very important task that we need to look on in the coming few years. And actually, you know, they started uh, doing this for some time. They did not really, really care about the achievements of youth. You know, um, you know, even they went to uh, 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 exhibitions abroad mm -hmm. and showing their own work. And of yes. course, they would be taken by companies, uh, international companies, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be coming back and they would be just paid. But now, you know, like even uh, some, you know, would be offered to come back, you know, to just, you know, take part of the country uh, ownership, to give, you know, to the mm -hmm. country. And um, uh, I think there's more care we should we need more 
of course, care and embracing them, as you said. But then um, I think, you know, like things changed here. We need our youth. We need, you know, our children. Uh, we need them to build them in order to just, you know, um, well, give them part of their own country and, and, and taking from them, you know, also uh, what the, they should be paying back, paying it forth, uh, forward to your country, you know, like it give you a lot. So this is, you know, what we need. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Like Dr. Magdi Agoub, for example, Definitely. he always co puts the country first. People should look up to yeah. uh, Sir Magdi Agoub and putting him as the idol needed. Uh, for me, Sir Magdi Agoub is like Captain America. When, when Captain America's image is in all over the schools in, um, uh, in, the, in the United States, and yeah. he's like the idol, we need you, we want you, and so on. S such uh, figures like Sir Magdi Agoub and uh, um, uh, past Professor Zawail is the people that these youth need to, to see and know that patriotism and Egyptian um, flag comes first. And we need to build more uh, um, of these examples uh, with the coming ages. Well, we do have actually examples, you know, a lot of them. And, you know, as you said, you like, uh, uh, forward among those examples, you know, that we know Dr. Magdi Aoub. And, of course, Dr. Magdi Aoub, even with, with all the, the, the work he's doing and all what he's giving, he has not escaped the evil words of those, you know, who try yeah. to just wreck yeah. anything good or anybody who is good and that was really uh, and still you know the evil mm -hmm. is there trying to fight anything good that would be coming here uh, so we need as you said a lot more examples we do have you know a lot of examples that are we are proud of actually um, and they, w they come back and, and help mm -hmm. uh, in the rebuilding of Egypt and we are very happy to have them yes. uh, definitely despite you know like some voices that are destructive mm -hmm. and try to, to destroy um, the human being, you know, or any kind of good thing that is um, taking place and happening in Egypt here. Actors, singers, even those who do not play uh, patriot roles in, in, in series or in movies, they have a role because they, they are people follow them. And if they do an act or uh, say something, or football players, for mm -hmm. example, they need to, to work in the organization as a whole of building a human being. Definitely. Without them, without these people, without figures like Sir Magdi and, uh, uh, and other people like... And Muhammad Salah, you know, one Muhammad of them, we know exactly. like an exactly. example there, exactly. an example here. An example here. So we need to, to enroll these, all these figures in, in, into like the structure and organization of building a patriot human being. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, talking about, you know, all that, the, the negative effect or the, um, you know, positive effect, the effect of social media, mm -hmm. well, the social hub, you know, in general, we do, you know, uh, well, they've got some good points, but we saw a lot of bad effect happening through those, you know, who really are using uh, the social media in order to uh, destroy the good things. Rumors, uh, social media trends, and, and so on. Uh, people yeah. find it easier to share than to verify what's what they're sharing or what, yeah. and uh, they they take it much easier to share and not listen or watch the full truth and uh, what's going to be shared. They find it easier to put out a rumor than to to prevent it from going on. Even in big topics like what happened in France and, and, and so on, they find it easier to answer and fight back by another and another instead of neglecting it and as if it's nothing because we're confident of ourselves yeah. and our, what are we doing. Sitting back behind the social media have a lot of effects uh, and reasons that happen through, throughout the years. And in order to fight them, it's, it has to come from the human itself, from the people sharing itself, like communicating with them through their idols, also like uh, the YouTubers and, and, and so on, that will give the right message to them and not to share without verifying the message. It's a long process and social media has always been the interest, not only in Egypt, but around the world, and putting some um, follow-up on what's going on and shared. And uh, because everything 
bad starts from the social media. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And for, for, for myself, I try to avoid talking about politics this is my own personal place. And this is why social media has been invented in order to communicate with my friends and so on, not to share and talk about politics and things that uh, will more uh, will harm more than it will benefit. Them. Definitely. Well, we get less than the, uh, we've got less than two minutes and good sure. time fly very fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you've got to say about the, the whole issue of uh, uh, the, uh, the elections and what would you like to see? Well, um, I have to ensure that people take the right precautions while vo doing votes, yeah, especially definitely, in, definitely. In, in Cairo. Uh, w Egypt is going to face um, 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 a challenge uh, if the second wave hits Egypt with the numbers that we're seeing today and yesterday. Uh, so choosing right, participating in the elections and uh, supporting your country through, through participation will ensure the sustainable pol economic and political development plan that we're, that we're living uh, at the moment. And for the evil voices? Mm. Uh, you will not win because we're Egyptians. It's simple as Definitely. that. Definitely. <laughs> Very hard in the combination. You are, you know, unbeatable. Yeah, <laughs> we're unbeatable. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mr. Hazem Mahilal, thank you very much for being with us. It was a pleasure it having you, as always. Yes, uh, we'll see you after the elections and Definitely. we'll know what happened and uh, well you know we'll have of course you know, like a, a breakdown of everything you know that Definitely. took place it, it's always a pleasure <laughs> thank you very much for being there and i'd like to thank our viewers for being there um we as we always end god bless egypt god bless egyptians god bless our president god bless our army our white army our police and it will have a salam inshallah amin quoting from the holy quran enter egypt god willing a safe and mubarak shabi masra blessed be egypt my people from the holy bible i'm nermin azim signing off we'll see you again next week bye for now <laughs>